that hopelessness, um, univers universally is like it it exists in some capacity and try to. Figure, I, mean, I don't know. I've been thinking about that so much lately, and then um, as it, especially this week with it. It's like, yo, man, I remember when I just wanted to do music. And now you're making a statement. It's like, hmm. And then you asked a really great question. You're like, yo, what are some of the ways y'all deal with stress? I've been thinking about that a lot. Um, changing the story, telling myself, like, all kind of things. What What do you, if anybody can answer, like, what are some of the ways y'all deal? Are, are, do you even identify... Are you able to identify that you're stressed? I thought, I thought it was really the thing where it got me stuck is like, because I still struggle to identify when I am stressed until something happens. I'm like, oh, I'm stressed the fuck out. Mm -hmm. um, are you guys able to identify it? And then what are the ways, if you are able to identify it, what are some of the ways you deal? You, you know, you... Yeah, no, stress is very prevalent to me. So like, I know when, when stress is building up on me, like I automatically have like a, shortness of breath and really chest chest compacts and shit like that so like i know exactly when stress is coming down my turnpike so mm -hmm. for me it's more so uh for sure is always air uh something where you can you can feel like you breathe you got to get to the to the uh, breathing patterns making sure you have that correct because it really it just comes down to whenever you feel stress you start to shorten your breath huh. so you have to figure out a way to open for how much air you're getting you're giving yourself uh, so that you can work your way through that part um, another thing for me is like getting to the bottom of like like trying to see something that's that's familiar you know going through familiarity uh, and also a lot of times like reading or doing something new too allows me to get outside of the space because whatever because it allows me to see like what it what it is that was stressing me mm. like if i can see what is stressing me then i can know what to like how to get out of that stressful situation mm. but first things first you have to be able to recognize so i've gotten way better at recognizing what's a stressful situation so that it doesn't creep up on me because that was like the worst shit is if, if it was a creep up like that's the shit where you be at the hospital and like they ain't got no answers for you. They just like, my nigga, breathe. And it's like, bro, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I can't. My nigga, breathe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, it's just like, they give me an IV or give me some random. I don't know what the fuck you need to give me, bro. Like, I don't give know. Give me something. Give me something, my nigga. Like, let me. Shit. I don't know. Any, any, any ways you, you, you too? Um, are yeah. You able I, to identify it. Yeah. You are. Kind of the same situation. Like, I had my first. Anxiety attack mm -hmm. maybe five years ago, wow. and I didn't I didn't realize it because I I've, I've always felt like I was good at managing like my levels and always staying cool, but my work schedule was off. Mm -hmm. Man, I was, at the time I was going through a divorce, just had got back from like closing that out, yeah. and just everything was like, yeah, you need to sit down for a second, buddy. And I was getting off on sixth in the city, and I felt that shot go down the side of my head. And then in your mind, you're like, all right, is this a, is this a heart attack? Is this what? And you make it. You start to make it bigger than what it is. Mm. Pull it off to the side of the road. And first thing I did, which I probably shouldn't have did, I was like, and this is my fear. Like, I don't have, like, honestly, I don't have a fear of dying, but it's dying by myself mm -hmm. or without somebody knowing. Yeah, that was a dollar just so I called my mom. And I was like, yeah, I'm just like, this is what's happening. You know what I'm saying? Now the conversation's like, I'm gone, but I just want to let her know. So she started panicking, so I started panicking. The dude rolling past on the bike, he panicking. He looked in the window. He's like, yo, you need some help? I was like, yeah, bro, I don't even know what's going on. Like, So he called, took me to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. They can't tell you what's wrong. Trying all kinds of positions. Yeah. I, I done laid on the ground with my feet up, I, yeah. like in the middle of the waiting room. Like, my name, like, I don't... I, I don't, but whatever position I'm in is uncomfortable. Yeah. I'll try to get some wind. Yeah. Wow. So I go through the same thing now, just trying to breathe. Yeah. Um, certain trying to identify certain things that trigger it. Yeah. Like uh, driving starts to trigger it mm. for some reason. Like I could just be 
having a good day and I'm on a driving and I can feel it creeping up. Oh, wow. it's, a, it's a feeling like, here we go again. Mm -hmm. And you just try to figure out how to breathe and, and kind of get yourself back on track. And I've gotten better at it. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a weird feeling. It's like the, it, it, I feel like it's a, to some extent, maybe a chemical thing as well, because that first one, that first big one, felt like it opened the door up and changed my balance. Mm -hmm. Really? I was, like, I'll keep these smaller ones. Um, even when I'm like... It's an awareness factor. Yeah, so it's a... Uh, Experiencing that before you get that, now you have triggers that can get you directly into that as opposed to like whatever amount of years it might have took to build up to that point. Yeah. Now it's like, oh, just small little... Yeah, like like how when you have an earthquake, now you have like the aftershocks. Yeah, yeah. Just like that, yeah. Damn. Yeah, um, yeah. honestly, every now and then I have them lonely cries where I just let it out. Yeah. I just got to release it. Yeah. Like, it, it's them ugly cries. You're just like, damn, I just got to let it flow. Yeah. Um, so that's one way of, like, dealing with the stress. Um, but the other is getting outside, taking a walk, mm -hmm. and just taking in everything that's happening around me for perspective. And just carrying the camera, that's been a big stress reliever for me lately is just being able to take shots of the life that's happening so that I can appreciate it. That's good. I think for me, the hardest part is noticing that I'm stressed. Mm. And I don't know if that comes from, like you guys said, just surviving and not living. Mm -hmm. And for so many years, a lot of people have always been the one to like depend on me for shit. And I always be like, ah, I got it, I got it. So then it like my stress, my level of how much stress I could take is really high. But the problem is I don't notice even when it's starting to build up. And then when it gets almost to the point I break, if I break, it's all the way bad. So then that's when when it's getting to the point where I'm like, holy fuck, I'm fucked up. Like, and for me, when I'm really stressed out, I get bad headaches, I get sick, I'll start throwing up and some old shit. So as soon as I see that, that's when I, I tell everybody, hey, I got to take a break from everything and just sit back and breathe, <clears throat> recalculate for a couple of days. So I'm trying to figure out ways I can notice before I get all the way up there. And I have to be like John Taffer on Bar Rescue and just shut everything <laughs> down. Yeah. And I can just get to a point where it's like, like you said, I notice, sit back, breathe for five, or five ten minutes instead of like, having to take a full day off of everything exactly. and just chilling with Sid and and just, you know, like, replacing my life. What? The I, we, the I Am Athlete dialogue was, I thought, was so important because they were having a very, very a eerily similar conversation. And, you know, Brent B. Marsh, he actually ended up in a facility um, during his stint. I, I'm so so inspired by his courage and to talk about it, I'll talk to you about your courage and like how many of us experience exact, like literally have anxiety attacks and just go on with their day. And you're like, wait a minute. Like not only, not only is that a normal part of the process of living so much so that you shouldn't have to get, to these high, ridiculous, <coughs> build up these ridiculous thresholds and then just crumble. Like, in moder to your point, in the, 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 the aftershock effects, like, yo, just deal with each of them as they come so they're not as massive, but there's never been space like this before. Not in, and you've never had the language and the wherewithal and the tools and, I like, I say it and I hope you, nigga, I hope you understand how important your fight is, so now I don't feel fucking crazy for for crying, nigga. nigga. And and tra like the traffic shit, I relate to. Nigga, I've had some of the most epic cries in traffic, part yeah. mainly because I'm alone. <laughs> but it's also yeah. I hate traffic, <laughs> nigga. I hate it. Like I hate. I don't like it. Like I can ride in it and like be driven and shit, but driving in is like, bro, what the fuck am I doing here? Yeah. Like I, it ain't no place in the world I want to get to bad enough to sit in traffic, bro. Like that's how <laughs> much I hate it. Like for real. And I and partly it's be it's the it's so back to the whole survivor's guilt shit. 
I, I, the times when I do get, do get stuck in traffic, I think about the people who do that shit every day, going and coming, and be like, I'm not, I'm not built to work, in to to work a part of this shit. Like I'm just not. Yeah, man. I would lose my mind, nigga. I wake up when I want to. I walk to this motherfucker just so I can bypass traffic jams. Like, and so much of my stress. Like I do. I. Uh, uh, Push hit me the other day. He was like, bro, hey, you okay? You need anything? I'm like, man, I'm fine. What the fuck you talking about? He's like, bro, he's, I just want you to slow down because you're doing a lot. He's like, nigga, you got payroll. I said, oh, my God. I didn't even, it didn't even dawn on me. Like, that shit didn't even hit me, bro. So then he was like, bro, you pay people. I was like, fuck, so much of my, like, as, again, I would do this shit for free. I, mean, I am still doing it for free. <laughs> so, let me stop. I am still doing it. I would do all all of this no matter if there was if it was money or not. In the in the name of building a system, uh, yeah. of building an, an economy, money money discussion the relationship, my relationship with money has had to change. Uh, the information that I'm seeking, uh, just how I view it, I've had to tell myself a completely different story. Um, and completely reimagine that space, but so much of my stress and my original triggers, bruh, like, like, hey, Monty, ask for help. When you like, yo, I'm nigga, I want to do the pod. You know, I just, literally, this is some new shit from therapy. I couldn't allow you to do it, bruh, because of how much trauma I carry from asking for shit when I was a kid. I love my parents to death. They didn't. They didn't know no. But it, and and I and now I'm old enough to peep their relationships with their parents. The only reason their responses were the way that they were is because that's how they res- responded to when asking for help. You know I ain't got it. it like, <laughs> how the fuck I'm supposed to know? I'm 11. I don't know what's going on. I, all my other partners is getting this shit though. Like it's just a simple question. But when, and then they go, "Why you don't ever ask for? Why you ask for help?" Uh, I, because I didn't want to have this awkward ass conversation and have this response when it's it's not that big a deal. I don't need it that bad. Whatever, whatever it was, I don't need it bad enough to sit with you tripping the fuck out mm-hmm. and displacing your stress because you stressed out because, and then now working with agencies, nigga, you hey, some of the top agencies in the world, my nigga, have been three months late on invoices. How are you three and just and just hey man, my bad, we're gonna get to you. Oh, so if if Facebook is going hey fam, my bad. I know Utty and MA got it for surely. <laughs> that, that 90 terms. Hey, and they mean it. <laughs> they mean it. When they say net 90, nigga, they mean all 90 of them. But this is so fucked up. These were net 30. And they still coming in. You're in breach, fam. Yeah. You're in absolute breach. Work with us. All right, <laughs> now, now y'all sound like the homies outside, so it's it's good. But I just want you, to, I just want everybody to know this hamster wheel shit of money ain't worth it to be flashing on your kids. I have to rearrange a few things. The most common things that come in is for show sure electricity, gas, all the, like the, yeah. the utility companies. Man. Them shits is covered no matter no what. Matter They're what. shutting your shit off. They, hey, ain't no, ain't no grace. That and then whatever. Uh, Whatever uh, property tax you have. Man. Like, those are the most consistent things that you go going to have. So I'm like, uh, I'm going to see us soon. I'm going to work some things around. You know, we got to... What's the name about to go go soon, so... What? No, so when oh, I, I want to... <laughs> <laughs> now, the... Um, you cut it at. The, the breathing, though. Shout out to Alicia. And she just recently left her job and started her company. So did B. Simmons. B. Simmons is full-time music now. Salute to him. Um... I'm just watching the homies make these transitions, but it's all in the space of of wellness first. Mm-hmm. How much we can accomplish if we're well first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fuck your talent. You hustling, nigga, are you healthy? Mm-hmm. Have you slept? Yeah. Are you eating? Are you hydrated? Yeah. Oh, let's let's start there. I and I, it's 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 been a really hard conversation to have with artists too, because they're like, "Yo, what's the secret? Wellness? Yeah. This shit is not in the name of fame at all. Because if you're not well, it's not going to work. For sure. It's not. It's not sustainable. 
You can have your moment. You could be lit for sure. Yeah. I see niggas put together some moments and be lit and what get a get a hundred thousand followers over a summer. Get a get a million get a million listens on Spotify in a in a matter of months. Have at it. But if you are not well, guess what? It, none of it'll matter. It's, it's built on a faulty foundation. Come on, bro. And everybody be talking about, yo, we need to do this, we need to do that. No, no man, just take care of yourself right now. <laughs> yeah. Everything else will fall in place. Every, bro, it is, it's so true. Your ability to show up, how you show up, that's the ascending part. Nigga, any, anybody, that, anybody that needs you to do, to do the self-work, get them a fuck away from around you ASAP. Cause they're impeding, they're impeding your your tinker, the tinkering you need to do with self. And they're not respecting it. and They're not adding no value. We all got hella work to do, bro. The last thing I need to do is come impede on. Hey, Lex, you got your you you're doing your two a days right now, bro? You need anything? Yeah, nigga, for you to get on your two a days. How about that? All right. So you white? Oh yeah. Hey. <laughs> nigga, Morg was so juice. I got my watch. He said, "Nigga, I'm giving you till Monday. I'm on your ass, nigga. Challenge. Expect a challenge every day. <laughs> my own type of friends. I won't. Uh, uh, Floyd and uh, uh, Javante's corner last night. Hey, fam, you're down on the scorecard. No, I'm not, nigga. I'm watching the fight. You're down <laughs> on the scorecard. Oh, bet. I'm on it. Them the type of people you need around you. Make sure you in fighting shape, because this shit about to get crazy before it get, yeah. get cool. Yeah. What? This shit is about to be crazy no matter, <laughs> like, no matter what state of mind you are in, that shit's about to get crazy. You know what I'm saying? But, like, it's a, it's important that you have the, the wherewithal to then withstand it. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like, it's... Some, some people can hit this thing with the, hit the ground running, and that shit never affect them and that's literally comes from for one knowing self yeah. mm -hmm. and then for two taking care of self once you know self then you can take care of it you yeah. know but like folks be trying to bypass that shit and just jump right to nigga being on and having all these things come in and having people once people start depending on you best believe your shit ain't slowing down no time soon mm -mm. you know what I'm saying like the moment somebody depend on you mm. whether you got a child whether you got Employee, whether you got a manager, I don't know you what the fuck. Whole, I don't know who the hell you, you got. got a whole buddy. staff over there. You, you got. Know what I'm saying, like, once you got fuck, once you got folks that's depending on you, then you automatically have to be and go drive. Mm. You might want to take care of your shit before then, or while that's taking place. But you might want to carve out some time. You know what I mean? But I think I think people do that when they get in tune with self. Uh, um. I just want to say one more thing, my bad. Uh, another good thing, another good thing I learned, too, is uh, water. Drink fucking water, man. Mm. Like, you drink... The healing component. <laughs> Shout out Mick. <laughs> Mick is a fucking legend for that, bro. Drink that motherfucking water, bro. Yeah. 